Hey, it's the old RF here. Got the old fan blowing because it's not supposed to be hot this time of year, but it's hot. And I'm going to compare a couple of things that uh, you wouldn't think would be interconnected, but they are. And there's a pretty crazy diagram and some air pressure stuff and other facts that nobody really cares about. But I'll try to tie it all together. So just stay tuned. new friend Daryl Barnett here's a couple of snapshots of Daryl Barnett he studied ballistics and rockets and things that fly around relatively fast through his career as I've always said it's better to have smart friends than to be smart and he has a full uh, presentation on forward of center and all this good stuff and some crazy scientific and super dynamic other topics is it'll be coming out Future videos, I'm just gonna to try to focus on one thing here. And that is the trajectory of the arrow comparing two things, and I'm gonna talk about javelins a little bit. So apparently in 1984, there's a guy, and he threw a javelin further than anyone, and they think the record will never be broken. In fact, at that time, they were having trouble because the javelins were landing flat on the, on the surface of the field and bouncing around and causing some mayhem, madness, and general consternation for people running the 400 as a javelin skipped across <laughs> the track. And they decided to stop having you know them bounce. Aside from the danger, of it skipping across the track as some guys running, you know, 1600. When the thing lands flat on the turf, they can't really mark where it was and nobody wants their javelin measurement from here. So if it hits the earth like this, they're gonna measure that, I believe. I don't know. It'd be better if it'd be here because you know that's the furthest distance. I'm not a javelin guy, but let's just make an assumption. Think you'd wanna do that. And that's the key. All right, atmosphere, hmm, stay tuned for that. It's gonna get crazy. You don't realize that at sea level, there's 14.7 PSI or pressure pressure on you at all times, just like a fish underwater doesn't realize there's water pressure because they've always been a fish and they've swum up and down and it's all the same to them. But when your arrow is flying through the air, there's actually a force of the atmosphere on the arrow from the front all along it and as it goes along its trajectory pressing on the arrow itself get that in your head it's like you're shooting through fog or super thin ballistic gel would be a, a better you know kind of visual reference so would you want the arrow to fly like this or would you want the arrow to fly like that since it's flying through something with force it actually has a force on it all right so Here's a diagram from the Fire Knock website. And it shows the flight of two different arrows. It shows one flying very flat like this with lower forward of center. And it actually travels further. That's what Yui Howe and the guys were doing back in 84. They had a very balanced javelin and they were hucking it and it was actually carrying further in the atmosphere because the pressure on the javelin was allowing the whole thing to actually sit on the atmosphere and travel further, it like carried it, because it's pushing down on the atmosphere, physically pushing on it the full length of the javelin. They know for a fact that means it carries further. Got that, and it started bouncing around, consternation, stabbing people, etc. They actually modified the javelin. They blunted the end and moved the weight forward just a little bit to ensure 
that it would penetrate in the turf and be safer. The javelin, once it tips over, the atmosphere is pushing on this. It's a downward force and it's gonna force it into the ground. So why do we care for bow hunting if the arrow flies like this or if it follows a trajectory like that? Penetration. Let's go back to the diagram from Fire Knock. An arrow that's traveling and it's flat and it's carrying and landing like this, the force of the arrow is going forward and down at the same time. So it's gonna impact the target going like this. There's a downward force going this direction. The back of the arrow's back here. So it's gonna go like this and hit and do that. Javelin throwing, nobody cares. Well, they care, they fixed it so it would come in like this. When you hit an animal, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it's, it would be logical that this force here, you don't want it to come in like that because the force is gonna be this way and forward. You would prefer the arrow to come in with the tail behind it and drive the whole shaft in one direction. So that's where we tie together a javelin and an arrow. Obviously the javelin thing's completely, you know, there's nothing to do with penetrating animals. But if we can get this downward force of the whole arrow pushing and going into the animal, this is exaggerated, right? You, whatever angle it is, it's still going all the force is going down the shaft. It's not going in two different directions and coming in like that, essentially. This is very exaggerated, but it's coming in like that. And then it, it has the possibility of levering because you have all this arrow in the back. So that's a little bit more on why forward of center has something to do with high penetration. The tail's gonna follow it up the trajectory, the tail's gonna follow it down and it's gonna be right behind it and you know, continue on the same exact path, right wind and all that aside. Got that, a little bit of humanity, maybe the animals move, but it's not, in, it's not intentionally or by design already gonna for sure go like this. Now, if you're shooting 3D, honestly, you probably want this arrow. You don't care about penetration, you care about carry. It might save you a couple of yards or a misjudge if the arrow comes in like that. It just sticks in, nobody cares. It's just what you hit, if it goes in this far, it's still a 12, right? So it's practical for that, but for penetrating animals to have it go in at two different directions doesn't make a lot of sense because we're gonna see some of this. Especially for you long range guys shooting 60 or 70 yards, you would prefer it to hit like that to kill animals and be efficient and be the most efficient you possibly can be. So I hope that helps. When I talk to Daryl Barnett, I sit there and he points at stuff and, and talks to me about physics and, and all these formulas and stuff. And I just sit there and go, oh yeah, <laughs> I got that, yeah. Of course I understand that. <laughs> and then blood starts coming out of my ears and then he sees that and he says, hey man, maybe we should talk about like shotgunning or you know, duck hunting or something more simple than, you know, your redneck freaking head can understand. So a little bit of a concept, something to think about why you would want a higher forward of center arrow coming in with the tail following it and, and the point pulling to increase penetration on animals, hit the dirt, blow through them, knock them down, they go 40 yards. That's the goal. That's the Ranch Ferry. Hey, subscribe to the channel, hit that stupid bell thing. I don't even know what that is. Got my Tough Head t-shirt on today because Rojo just sent that to me, but you need one of those. So go below. There's a link right below or whatever. Click on that. Get you a shoot adult arrows t-shirt. Wear it around the archery shop and stuff. And, you know, don't get any fights or anything. People get a little testy, but it's fun to truck around in that shirt and have a great time. Subscribe. Hit the bell. 
Stay tuned. More madness, science, facts, atmospheric pressure and javelins. Have you ever heard of anybody put that together in a video and it makes some sense? <laughs> God, I hope it did. Ranch Ferry out.